What's going on guys? Quick preview here for the today's week 6 matchup between the Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Redskins. Of course, my Minnesota Vikings are 4 and 1. They're playing very good football right now, but they're traveling on the road against RG3 who is expected to start today in this high-scoring Washington offense. I'm really interested in this game and it could serve as a major trap game for the Minnesota Vikings if they don't come up prepared and they underestimate this team because the Redskins have been competitive in every game this season. And they have two very good rookies and Robert Griffin III, of course, and Alfred Morris, the running back out of Florida Atlantic. But for the Minnesota Vikings today, they're playing their first game outside of a dome, and it's also their third road game of the year. And their offense has struggled in the previous two road games, but this is probably their best matchup defense-wise, I would have to say, with them having two big injuries in their front seven with Brian Arakpo and Adam Carricker, and then that beat-up secondary that I believe is like 31st against the pass in the NFL. And so the Vikings have opportunities today to have a big offensive day as long as Adrian Peterson can get going. And this is, of course, where he got injured last year. You know he's going to want to go out there and show this Redskins team that he is back and better than ever. And so I'm expecting Adrian Peterson to have a big day on the ground after he only, he's only had one really big game on the ground this year. That was against Jacksonville when he had two touchdowns. But I want to see Adrian get into the end zone a couple times again today. And I also want to see them have a good blend of Percy Harvin as well. But the one guy I like matchup-wise for the Washington Redskins is cornerback D'Angelo Hall. Of course, he has very good speed. And he's probably going to be one of the guys really asked to help contain Percy Harvin this week. And the only team that has contained Percy all year has been the Detroit Lions. And so that's definitely going to be one of their focuses. But one of the things the Vikings can do otherwise is attacking their linebackers and the safeties with Kyle Rudolph, a starting tight end now, second year man out of Notre Dame. And he's had four touchdowns this year, only 19 catches. But this game could be one of his big breakout games of his second year because the Redskins have given up a lot of yards to opposing tight ends, including Tony Gonzalez last week. And so I want to see the Vikings try to highlight Rudolph early in this game and to open up the field so they can spread it out to Percy Harvin and the other playmakers on the team. It's still a question mark while whether uh, Jerome Simpson is going to play. Of course, last Sunday he woke up and apparently had some leg numbness and he had a back issue that they really didn't pinpoint until he had an MRI on Monday or Tuesday, I forget. But he's still questionable for this game. It's a game-time decision to see how he is good to go. But if he is at least playing and on the field, he can stretch a field out and open it up for Percy Harvin and Kyle Rudolph and everybody else, but I want to see him make a big impact if he does play, but I'm still waiting to see how healthy he's going to be after this apparent injury that came out of nowhere on Sunday morning, but for the Redskins, they do have some very good playmakers the Vikings have to watch out for. Alfred Morris, RG3. RG3 had that concussion last week, and I've expected them to play this entire time. It didn't appear to be very major. And this is the Vikings' first test as far as a dual-threat quarterback is concerned. So I want to see how they handle it and how they keep RG3 in the pocket and make him beat them with his arm. And one stat about RG3 I want to throw out here right now is that he has on 18 passes on the season of over 20 yards. And the Vikings' defense, ever since Week 2... This defense has changed, and it had to do with the four veteran leaders on defense going and talking to the defensive coordinator to switch up some things, and so far, so good. Three games have been very successful for the Vikings defense. They've been lights out in one of the top defenses over the past three weeks, but they're going to have a big test this week with their first dual threat quarterback, as well as Alfred Morris. Now, Alfred has had a lot of success this year, but I don't think he's played a run defense like the Vikings, and the Vikings have held every running back this year in check for the most part, other than MJD having like 80-something yards against them. They've held the running back and check and have only given up one rushing touchdown on the year. And so if they can stop Alfred Morris from taking over this game and extending drives and moving the chains, and they don't let RG3 beat him deep, that's going to be the Vikings' best opportunity to get the win and make RG3 beat him underneath with his legs, although that could be dangerous for the Vikings. They don't have all the speed in the world on defense, although they did get faster this offseason by getting Josh Robinson, the fastest guy at the combine, Harrison Smith is an upgrade at safety. But we'll see how much they do run the ball with RG3 and run in the option style or if he runs when he has to pass. But from what I've been reading over the past couple of days, it seems as if Washington will keep their offense pretty much the same, which will be a good test for the Vikings. I want to see how they do against RG3. And he has only thrown one interception this year and has the highest completion percentage in the NFL, which I think is pretty remarkable considering Pierre Garçon's been hurt a lot this year and that he's a kind of a guy who's going to throw the ball deep quite often. So he's not like Christian Ponder throwing as many dump-offs, but Ponder is second to completion percentage and both have been very good this year. But I think the Vikings have a good shot to win this game because their defense is better. And I think they match up well against the Redskins on defense, actually, because they can prevent the big play and they can stop the run. And that's just been the Vikings' 
philosophy for a long time now, and they're really executing it very well right now, especially over the last three days, or three games, I mean. And so I'm excited to see how they do this week. But it's a good test for them. It could be a trap game. But I think if they can avoid the Redskins coming out on fire and getting off to a really fast start and building up a double-digit lead too early in this game, because the Vikings aren't a team that's built to play from behind. They're a lot like the 49ers. They want to play defense, run the football, manage a game on offense, and just beat you by being more effective than your offense. And so the Vikings can't afford to let the Redskins get off to a hot start. But I think the coaches and the veterans on this team have been doing a good job of making sure the Vikings don't let winning get to their head and the media attention get to them. So I think they're going to be okay in that regard, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, the Vikings haven't been so successful in the last few years. It is odd to see them winning once again, but it's awesome to see that as a Vikings fan. But I am confident in the Vikings this week, and I do expect them to get the victory in a good game. 27-20 to Minnesota, I'll take them moving to 5-1. and but anyways, guys, that is my preview of today's matchup between the Vikings and the Redskins. So leave your thoughts in the comment section on this game in particular. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.